Good morning, sunshine. <laughs> That's so cheesy. I was reading your comments and from yesterday's video about trying to find our father, you know, trying to have a relationship with God the Father. And so many of you didn't have fathers. And I'm really sorry about that. I'm so sorry. All the pain and the struggles that you've been through. Someone made a comment that about a cursed item, that there could be a cursed item because I didn't sleep well last night. Not last night, the night before. And, you know, I was waking up feeling sad. I felt like I didn't know the father and I was like very emotional in yesterday's video. Well, I went back to my room and Luke, my son, left his little rubber snake in my bed. And I felt something last night, like there's something in my bed, like I thought it was my computer because I, a lot of times I go to sleep listening to like the gospel or listening to the Bible on audio on YouTube, but I felt like there was like something in my bed. And I think that snake might have done something. I don't know. I'm not sure. When I was really young, actually, my dad's aunt came to Thailand and she brought back my sister and I, and this was, I guess, before Chloe, my younger sister, was born. She brought us back two little dolls from Thailand, these little tribal dolls. And I remember having bad dreams and nightmares. And I remember in what, like one nightmare, these dolls were hanging on a telephone wire, like a telephone wire, and they were like floating down the wire, the telephone wire. I still have that dream in my memory. So yeah, there could be a curse things in your house. You need to pray over them. You need to anoint them with oil if you think something is off with some, and you can't really get rid of it yet. When I had my harmonium and I was chanting to Shiva on the harmonium that I bought from India, I had a hard time getting rid of it because, you know, it cost money and I didn't know what to do with it. I wanted to burn it and what, like, didn't want me to burn it because he thought of it, you know, we should sell it. It's worth money. And he ended up like the demons that were in that harmonium he jumped into him and he started smashing the harmonium behind our house and he like literally got like a little bit possessed by something from that i tried to have the pastor's wife pray pray on it and she wouldn't even touch it she's like you have to get rid of that and that's when i asked what it was like well we got to get rid of it and he just started smashing it and like getting so much ang anger and rage yeah Anyway, on a lighter note than that, let's go for a walk. So you are all chosen. You are chosen by God from the beginning of time. He chose you to be his bride. Isn't that amazing? All, the, all, the, uh, all of us that believe in Jesus Christ, we have been set free from bondage, from our prison, from the debt, death penalty, and we have been granted everlasting life. And we have a new husband, a real husband, someone that's gonna really love us, a husband, a friend, a father, a comforter, like everything you could ever desire is in God. When you read the scriptures filled with the Holy Spirit, led by the Holy Spirit, things come to alive to you that you've never saw and you go and things, how do I explain it? Like you start to see things and you start to feel things like the, what they were feeling. What should I talk about first? The, the, last, the last sentence, like the last scriptures of the book of John, John says that Jesus, Jesus did so many miracles. It would have ta to name all of the miracles that he did. It would fill up so many books that wouldn't even be able to fit into this world. And Jesus only had a three year ministry. And before his ministry, we don't know much about his, his life. But I was reading and I was reading his first miracle that he did publicly with, and with his mother there at the wedding ceremony. 
right? Because he is our, it's at the wedding ceremony. And the wine finishes and she says to him, you know, the wine is finished. And he looks to her and he says, I forget the exact script words, woman, you know, my time has not yet come. And when I read that, I'm like, you know, he must have been doing these miracles before before that that first miracle that was his first public miracle but of course at home i mean mary and joseph they knew that they had the messiah that she was giving birth she was told by the angel gabriel and she knew that she was immaculately she the holy spirit came upon her and he jesus was immaculately conceived and i'm sure he was doing so many miracles as a child in, in his own home that were kept secret in the family and I'm sure he was turning water into wine all the time and that's why when they the the wine was finished she turned to him and was like this is is this your this your time and he said my time has not yet come almost like a jest like I like I would love to know like be there and like see like was he like joking like oh my time has not yet come but it actually has come because then he does it and she says go in she tells all the servants do whatever he says because she knows this is the beginning well it gives me goosebumps this is the beginning of his ministry of his of the world knowing who he really is and another part of the bible that came alive to me a couple years ago was the book of acts with cornelius so cornelius he was a gentile he was not jewish but he was a righteous man and he prayed to god and God heard his prayers and he sent Peter uh, to make the short, short story short an angel appeared to Cornelius and told Cornelius to send for Peter Peter was visit had a visitation by a uh, vision an angel and he went to go see Cornelius and then Peter just started before Peter was only sharing the news of Jesus the Messiah to the Jew to the Jewish people and then he realized that he could share it now with the Gentiles. So he shares it with Cornelius and Cornelius' group, his family. And as he's sharing, as he's sharing the, the gospel with them and telling him about Jesus, it says the Holy Spirit just falls on them and they start speaking in tongues and giving glory to God. Like I can, because I've like been go to a church that believes in the fire and know like the, how the presence of the Holy Spirit falls and like how they felt like when the Holy Spirit fell on them like wow he came for us too you know like they knew that the Jewish people were set apart and like they lived a different life and that that they had received the promise that they were they were the chosen people and I think the Gentiles probably always looked at all at the Jewish people for for the, their history, I mean, what the God of Israel had done, how the God of Israel had done all these great miracles and protected them, and they must have felt like, you know, like, you know, why are they, why do, it's maybe jealousy, maybe envy, maybe just like fascination, and then to be told by this Jew, Jewish, the Jew, this Jewish man, you know, that the Messiah has come for you guys too, and they help them speaking in tongues and then glorifying God. And like that miracle of realizing, wow, this covenant, this covenant of grace is not just for those who have been given the law, those who have been given the promise of Abraham, now it's going to everyone. What a miracle that is that we all, God loves us all so much that anyone has opportunity to get saved, to get a new life, to be under, to be under this new covenant of grace. We are saved by grace, not by works. And the enemy tries to come into my, like, I felt like I get twinges of guilt, feeling like I'm not reaching out to enough people here. I need to be visiting people more and ministering more. But I can't work myself to death. That's the enemy trying to like make me feel like it's and the enemy wants to find any type of way to find to try to put guilt in you. There are times when we need to be alone. There are times we need to just be alone with God and that's okay. It's okay to not always be going out and talking with people and evangelizing and 
there's seasons for that and there's seasons for quietness with God. And that's what the prophets went through. And that's what Jesus went through before he started his ministry. He did 40 days in the wilderness where he was tempted by God and he fasted. And in that 40 days, supernatural things were given to him, right? Supernatural anointings, the supernatural strength that he needed to fulfill his destiny and to, to go through what he had to go through with on the cross. So... Whatever season you're in right now, whether it's a season of being public and out there, just know that we have to be led by the Holy Spirit in all things and not by our flesh and that we're not being chasing after doing. We're, ch- we're trying to listen and obey. And God is our husband. He is our, we are his bride and he loves us with the deepest, most tender, most fulfilling love. He's the best husband, a woman, or a best, I guess for a man too, the best spouse anyone could ever want. Keep praying, keep pressing in, and keep building your faith through prayer, pray without ceasing, rejoice always, be grateful in all things. And cast your worries upon God because he has this. He's got this. Worry is really just a form of pride. Thinking that we need to work things out on our own. Yeah, and that's like, to works is a form of pride. Like, it's okay that I'm not meeting up with as many friends as I feel like I should be meeting up with. I'm doing God's work. I'm obeying him. I'm asking every day, okay, God, this is in your hands. And let me die to my desire to please man let me die to my desire to be popular on youtube let me die die to any type of greed that might be in in me let god pull back those layers so we can walk in his glory because he has he is a glorious path for it for us for you father god lord i just pray blessing over everyone watching lord that we walk in your glory and we experience you as our heavenly husband, our spouse, and that we are your bride and you love us with a tender, unending love, such a sweet love. And we want to walk in your ways, not by works, but by faith, not by our own power, but by your power, by the Holy Spirit power that works through us. Let us just flow with the Holy Spirit, walk in the Spirit. Walk in your glory. If you are interested in watching more about my life in Thailand, I will have a video of my, of a Thailand vlog from my other channel, Lily's Life, right here. Thank you all so much for listening, and I will see you in the next one. God bless you all.